Hey, what's up, guys? This is 3D Bonfire back with an amazing tutorial. And this time I wanted to talk about how to recreate these beautiful product shots. So I have seen this in the Samsung commercial. It's on their website as an advertisement for the Galaxy Z Flip 3. All right. And it looks like this. It's beautifully composed and the lighting. I really like it. And you can see I just recreated it. Okay. To be honest, the look is a little bit different. But this is just up to my artistic liking. So I just want to have it even more glossy with more highlights, I would say. So this is pretty dull, to be honest. I mean, it looks good, but somehow and this is just what I prefer to have it even more crisp and uh, glowing, uh, the highlights and you know what I'm talking about. So for example, this area in the original is really dark and yes, they just wanted to aim for more natural lighting here. But for example, in my case, I decided to light it up with a backlight to get this beautiful highlight here and there. And you can see when I go along here, this is, I think it just looks more awesome, more interesting. But of course, this is up to the needs of the shot. Okay, so sometimes you want to have it more like natural, more realistic. And this is more like really like a studio with lights here and there. And it's really sharp and it feels like high tech stuff. And I mean, overall, it's pretty similar. But um, yes, I just changed it a little bit. And yes, this will be part of the next lesson. You can also see another version I did here. So I just went for some random composition. I played with the same elements and just put it into a different composition. All right. So we will also talk about how you can arrange these elements in the frame that it feels pleasing for your eye. Obviously, this one is the gold standard, I would say. So this looks really good. It feels calm and beautifully composed. This one is a bit more chaotic. Okay, so I just wanted to test something different. And this one is really crowded with smartphones. Okay, so I think this is three times the amount than in these ones. I mean, here it's four, then I went up to six already. And I guess this one will be almost 20 or something like that. Okay. But anyway, this will be part of the next training. So we want to light really professional product lighting. But just as a little bonus tutorial, we will also create this little display and we don't do this in Illustrator or a graphic design program. We want to do this one in Cinema 4D, all right? So just as a little starter, let's just create these two displays in Cinema 4D, okay? Before we dive into the product lighting, let's just build some interface. So let's hop into Cinema 4D and build something like that. All right, and there we are in Cinema 4D. I just close my material manager and you can see I choose an aspect ratio that will more or less fit into this screen here. You can see I put it to 1280 by 700. And if you can't see my border so good, I just press down shift V and let's go to the save frames. And you can see here's my border. So maybe I just make this one really black. And let's start from scratch, I would say. All right. So I would just kill that stuff. And I want to start with a plane for the background. Okay. So let's just put it here. Let's make it a bit bigger in the width. All right. And then I just want to go here and fill it with a luminant material in something almost black. Okay. Something like this. All right. So. Let's make it dark, but not perfectly black. Okay, so this is our background. Then I want to create like this little watch. Okay, so this is from the original. You can see they had like this beautiful bubble font, 22 seconds, I guess, or whatever. This is maybe uh, the hours, I don't know. And I recreated it with another font, but more or less it's the same. And maybe some of you just want to go to Illustrator to build that one. But I just wanted to show you that you also can build these graphic designs in Cinema 4D. All right. So let's switch it over and build it. I think it's a good idea to maybe just start with a disc. All right. You can see my camera is already switched over. So I just move this one in the center. Then I click my background plane and center this one again. All right. So this is my disc. Let's just go here and put this one to 100, make it really smooth. And I think I just want to have this really tiny. All right. So this is the center of our little watch with the, you know what I mean, missing the right word in English. And you can see I already created some colors. I don't need these ones, but in the original, I just move it over here. You can see this one is 
with a red circle in the middle. And this is just what I'm creating right now. Okay, so let's just tint this one red. All right, and I think the next good idea would be to maybe just create a rectangle or you know what, we could also start with a plane. So I just put this one to five and this one maybe to 80, move it over. Okay, so the size, I think this is good enough. I just put this one to four. All right, so this will be one of these things that rotate around your watch, all right? So let's just put the segments to one and one. So this is fine. I press C to turn it into an editable object. Okay, and I just go out of my camera. And by the way, my camera is just on top. So this is like a top camera, but uh, in perspective mode. But of course, you could also go to the top view, for example. All right, so I just want to go out of the camera. And now you can see all of the stuff is intersecting because it's on the same level of height. All right, so a good idea would be to move the plane maybe to minus 0 0.5, all right, and then this one could be like 0.1. So this is above this element. All right. So there are no intersections. And now I just go to the plane here, select these two dots. And for some reason, I just want to keep this procedural. Okay. It's not really necessary, but I just want to teach you some techniques. So how about we just start this point selection. All right. And then we just go into the deformers and select the bevel deformer. Okay. Put it under your plane and then switch this one to points. Put in the selection. All right, and now just give this ones more subdivisions, okay? And just make this one round. So I think two, maybe 2.2, this is also good. I just want to put this one to two, and now we have a round pointer for your hours, okay? So let's make this one white, All right? That's good. Now what bothers me is that the axis is in the middle, so an easy way would be to just create the null, put it inside of it, so now I can just duplicate this one and rotate it around the center. And maybe this one is just a bit shorter. Okay, so this will be for the hours. This one is for the minutes. So I just go here, go to the scaling mode. All right, and I just make this one smaller, move it back here. All right, so this is looking good. All right, beautiful. And now one more for the seconds. And this one can be a bit more tight. All right, something like that. And I think it can be longer. So I guess this one will be the longest of these three pointers. I'm not sure if this is the right word, but anyway, so I just make this one bigger. I rotate it to, oh, I wanted to rotate this one. So I just put it down here. All right, so this is looking good. I just want to go back to my camera and offset this a little bit again. So make this one bigger. All right, so we have a watch here. Okay, this is looking good. Maybe I just want to move this one up. So this just feels better for me. Okay, and this one for the seconds, I will tint this one red. Okay, beautiful. So the next thing will be the 22 in the background. You can see this one. Okay, and we can also build this in Cinema 4D. So let's just do it. So I just select the text spline. I rotate it 90 degrees, all right, and put it over here go inside of it and just give me a two. Now you need a bubble font, something that feels really cartoon like. Okay, so you can go to some of these sites like Da Font and download one. Let's just see if I have one that just feels a little bit like like in a comic. So this is okay. So maybe we just use this one. All right, and then we need another number. I think here, should this be a one or is it also a two? I'm not sure, but it feels like 22, okay? So we want to create another one, but with this intersection between it, okay? It's like a stroke, but more like a graphical, beautiful thing here, okay? So let's just do this one. And we will do this with spline masks, by the way, okay? So let's create the first one and let's create the second one, okay? So I think this should be somewhere here, maybe like this. And now I need to have an outline of the first one. So therefore, I think I will just duplicate this one for now. All right, make this one invisible. Press C to make this one editable. Go to the points mode. Press Ctrl A to select all of them. Now I right click and then I go to create outline. All right, so now I click and drag and give this some thickness, something like that, for example. And I guess I just want to delete the original points. And now I have a new outline that will give us a border to the first number, right? So let's just put in our scene something that is called the spline mask. And then I just want to put these ones inside of it. Okay, so this is not what I want. So I want to do this along the Z and X axis. So I think 
we should switch over to this mode and I want to subtract A from B. Okay, is this correct? I think so. Let's just see how this is looking. Okay, perfect. That's exactly what I want. Okay, so now just give me an extrude here, put this one inside of it, click this one, give it also an extrude, hold down Alt, so now it goes directly underneath the extrude. Okay, so we have these two numbers. Great, I want to select both of them. We don't need any offset. So since we want to make this one from the top, you know, you don't need any thickness here. So you could basically set this one to zero and this is looking good, all right. So the only problem is that it is above our, our pointers for the hours and the seconds and stuff. So I guess I just want to select both of them and go to position and click 0 0.01 for example. Okay, so hopefully this will be beneath it. Let's go to something like that. Okay, so that should work. Okay, great. So now I just move these numbers over here and I think I just want to scale them a bit. All right, just put it here behind our watch. Okay, and I want to give it like this pink tone. Okay, perfect. And now just to make it complete, let's also give it this little text and we can build a little icon for the battery. Okay, so let's just do that. So I will just create another text here. Let's go there. I think this one is way too big. So first I want to get rid of the depth and put this one maybe to 60. All right, move it over here. And then I can write something like Wednesday. This is great. This is way too big. So I put this one to 30. All right, maybe like that. I think I just want to make it even smaller. Okay, something like this one. That's great. And now I just want to put a white luminant material on it. Okay, it's the same with all of these materials. Then just hold down STRD, drag and create a copy of this one. Let's call this one something like October 22nd. All right, let's just put it here. Okay, the typeface is pretty ugly. Maybe just a little thing. I just want to make this cursive. Okay. So this is looking better. And now to select the last one. And I think this one can be something like 78, like 78%. Okay, so let's say this is our battery. I just move it over. And then again, we could just create a little icon with spline masks. Okay, so let's just do this. I just want to go here, create a rectangle. I think this one should be aligned to X and Z. Let's make this one smaller. All right, let's just move it over here. I think this could be like 30, maybe something like that. Okay, so this would be our battery. I just make it more tiny, maybe like this one. Let's give it some rounding. And this is already working for me. So I press C to make it editable. Right click, select STRGA to select all the points. Right click and go to create outline. And let's just drag it here. Okay, so this is looking good. I just think the proportions are a bit off. So I just want to go here. These points in the middle are still selected. I just want to scale it. So I press T and just make it a bit more tiny here. So the border is on all sides in the same thickness. Okay, so that feels better. And I think because these ones are still selected, I can just duplicate this one UI to kill the other ones. Now I have an element with just these points here. I go to object mode, scale it and put it inside of it. So something like that, okay. Now I hold down Alt and create a rectangle. The rectangle is way too big, so put this one to 10 by 10. Rotate it around X and Z. I want to move this one over, okay, somewhere around here. Press T to just make it a bit bigger. Now give me a spline mask and I want to throw these ones inside of it. Spline mask, I go to X, Z. And I think I just want to set this one to B minus A, all right? And this will be the amount of battery that we still have in our smartphone, okay? So we could just duplicate the extrude here, kill this one, put this one inside of it. Let's duplicate it once more, kill this one and put the rectangle inside of it. All right, and there you go. So we created just like this little icon here. You can see the center point is off. So that's a bit awkward. So let's just select a rectangle here. Let's go to axis center. And if you don't have it here, I think you just go to tools, I guess, axis, axis center. All right. And then I just place it in my interface. Okay, so you could set this one to parent to execute. And now the extrude is also in this position. You can see with this one, it's still off. So just go to the spline mask here. All right. Or you maybe go to the 
rectangle parent two. Now and this one is in position, execute again. And now this one is also in position. All right, great. Now I select both of them, press T to scale it. Just make it a bit more tiny and put it here. Let's go back into our camera and now let's render it. And you can see we have a nice graphic design that we can place in our smartphone in the display. Okay, so simple tools here. But as you can see, you don't have to go into Illustrator or something like that. You can't do everything in Cinema 4D. All right, see you in the next tutorial. Bye guys.